This is the anger and outrage surging in Jordan, with fingers pointed at the government. Jordan's King Abdullah addressed his people's concerns. I know that people are not comfortable and feeling uneasy, and it is obvious there is a need for open discussion, so we can agree upon the upcoming developments. The king appointed cabinet member Omar Razaz as the country's new prime minister after accepting the resignation of Hani al-Mulki. Abdullah hoped to appease the masses and called for a review of the bill that sparked the unrest. The subject is not just, for example, the law taxation, corruption, administrative reforms, the poor and the unemployed. There is a lot of work to be done if we want to see how we will come out of this crisis and the work ahead. But he didn't say he would meet the protesters' demands to scrap the bill, which sparked the outrage. And it may not be enough. Even if they removed Mulki and replaced him with Razaz or with anyone else in the world, and the policies don't change, that would mean we've achieved nothing. In 2016, Jordan was granted a 723 million three-year credit line from the International Monetary Fund. It then imposed austerity measures to pay that back, which saw prices go up for average consumers, including the latest development, a 5.5% rise on fuel and a 19% increase in electric prices. For these protesters, a controversial tax bill was the last straw. The violent demonstrations are the largest in the country since 2011, and a general strike has been called for Wednesday. And Jordanian security services are on high alert. We will not allow for anyone to overstep or stray from the peaceful path, or allow people with agendas trying to create chaos. While the Jordanian monarchy withstood the Arab Spring in 2011, if it doesn't answer the calls of the people, this may be its greatest test yet. Emily Rose, I-24 News.